I thought I would do another video repair restoration of a reel to reel tape deck. This is a Electra model TC505. The box is in pretty good condition, as you can see. And it was originally cost $14.99. $14.99. I paid a little more than that for it from eBay, but um, it's all intact. Styrofoam still in place, and the uh, box is still in full pieces. Even still has its ribbon right here, which a lot of these boxes had to, uh, as part of the, the uh, storage for the tape it has uh I'm not sure what this was for oh it was for a reel yeah it had a tape reel in it at one time and uh it has the instruction manual which is a nice touch because it's very unusual to uh to find these it has the schematic in it wow and flutter is less than one percent which is about what you would expect for a, a rim drive tape recorder. Uh, it even had some corroded EverReady batteries. And I'm going to chuck those right now because they're just throw, uh, <clears throat> causing more trouble than they're worth. It has a nice little microphone here and the cord is in surprisingly good condition. It's starting to stick to the to the styrofoam a little bit but it's got the Electra um, logo see the logo and it's remote control and record so we'll test that see if it's working so uh, let's take it out see what kind of condition it's in here it even still has some desiccant in the bottom of the styrofoam which actually probably has helped it long term it's in pretty good condition very few scratches it needs a little cleanup the battery compartment is intact cover I mean it's got a little handle here that's nice all the labeling is still in place There we go. Snaps right into the side of the case beautifully. So, uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the top side here. It says open. There's a catch there. A couple of pins right there. It's got these big reels. And by that, I mean the earth, a full three inch, I guess, compared to these, if you see the difference. Also, see the size of the inside spool. It's quite a bit larger, which means this tape's going to spin, tape is going to travel through here more quickly. So it'll run a little faster. And if you record it on this Electra, the quality of the recording would be better because it's more tape running through and passing through the heads it's got a speed adjustment here volume control and it's a keypad uh, control there's an AC adapter connection which we can see let's see from the instructions probably three volts but yeah well of course we had the two uh, D sized batteries and let's see what it says about AC adapter. Here we go. Um, electric power from ordinary home. Doesn't say what voltage, but we know that it's 3 volts. And let's see here. It's a DC bias. Three and a quarter inch reels. 
and it weighs almost three pounds with the batteries and a microphone. Okay, so let's uh, let's just take a look at the battery compartment. I hope that's in decent condition, and uh, I'll we'll get into that and check and see what it looks like. And then we'll put some deoxit on those. Just a little on the terminals. Just to prevent any further corrosion. Okay. See if we have any motor. Well, that's a good sign. It's not turning very fast. What about rewind? Yeah. Okay, speed seems to be working. Yeah, got good stiff. The audio. A little bit of corrosion there, but let's just see what we have here. that's on the tape but it might be no so we've got some feedback going on with the amplifier and it's Yeah, the volume's all the way up, and you can just barely hear the talking there. Probably can hear it better on the tape. I mean, on the recorder. Okay, have no idea who that is or what it is, but let's um, let's get into the amplifier and see if maybe we got some bad caps. Looks like it's a five transistor tape deck. I'm tickled that the uh, transport system is working great. That's very encouraging. So let's open it up and take a look at the inside and. Uh, 
See if we can figure out why we've got some feedback in the in the amp. Yeah. We turn it down and it starts giving feedback. So not sure what's what's happening there. And you can hear we've got a little bit of a buzz on the motor. So we need to get rid of that as well. Let's pull this up and take a look at this. Okay, nothing too crazy there. The magnet for the erase head or the erase, you can see that it engages when we push the record. So we'll clean and demagnetize the head in a moment. So let's take a look at the what we have here. Just screw there, 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 there. So let's just get into it. Boy, those screws are in there really tight. My goodness. Mm. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I am not kidding. Those screws feel like they've been glued in. Maybe somebody thought they were doing, or they've never been out since 1960. Look like they have glue on them. And there's one screw still stuck in there. Screw. There we go. Okay. Wow. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Looks very nice and clean. Single motor that moves back and forth on either side. So this is the the play rim play wheel and we'll zoom in here I don't see any notches in the rubber which is a very good sign oh yeah there is one little notch right there I don't know if, let's zoom in and see if you can see it yeah you can see it right there a little notch hear it bumping on the motor but not too shabby we might be able to sand that down and it's, the rubber is surprisingly soft so that's a good sign the I'm going to put on a rewind yeah the reels are pretty stiff and that's something that you have to check out this has got gunk in it on the shaft and these are really stiff turning that is, it needs to be cleaned and oiled. The um, rewind, let's see if there's a notch on the rewind roller. Don't see one. Might, might be a little bit of a notch, but it was probably left, if it was left in the stop position, it would uh, definitely pick up that notch on the play reel. The motor would be pushed into the tire. Let's just take a look at the uh, electronics. 
You can see the rheostat for the motor. Here's the coils around the edges of the rheostat. Just a little 10K uh, pot for the volume. And let's see, we can count the two amp, uh, two output transistors, one, two. There's the output transformer and the input transformer. And then there's one, two, three, uh, wait, one, two, three other transistors for the uh, preamp section. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven caps. And I can virtually assure you that at least one of these caps is bad. So we're going to replace them all since there's only three, four, five, six, seven of them. Be an easy job, 30 minute job to replace those caps. And that probably will eliminate our feedback issue that we had, most likely. So I'll uh, I'll spray or use the deoxit on the pot here, and we'll clean up the real shafts i'm not going to do anything to this to this rubber just yet we'll wait and see about that and uh we'll replace the caps on the amplifier board and then we'll come back and and see if we got rid of our feedback and we'll we'll talk about this bumping on the rubber tire and see if it makes any sense to shave that down just a little bit Okay, <clears throat> let's button her back up. And this has not been <clears throat> serviced before because these uh, screws have got the original seal. Okay, so we got to make sure we put this back underneath here. Let's see, we should be able to check this. Rewind. Stop. Play. And the motor <clears throat> is growling. So we're going to clean the motor. And the uh, shaft has got crud on it. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, you see the shaft, the motor shaft has got crud on it. See that? You can see that we need to clean that. And of course we need to remove these and, and uh, oil them. So let's do that.
PFPE grease, precision parts, and bearings. They're seeking a significant drop in friction and maximum protection. So what happens when I push the trigger on this, the grease just blasts out. So I have to squeeze it gently. There we go. To get it started. A little bit in the spindle itself. Okay, it's still a little stiff. There we go. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's clean this and oil it before we put it together. Isopropyl alcohol. Hear the motor running. <clears throat> Got some gun oil here. Just put a tiny drop on that motor. Let it run. Good. this roller this one more time okay this is stiff we need to do that one too this one back on Finally bought a box of E clips, C clips, E rings, C rings, whatever they're called. Because I would always flip those things off into the space and uh, was stuck without a replacement. see a lot of corrosion there.
kind of squeeze this gently. Okay, that'll help. And then this has got a little bit of grunge on it. There's the... Now this is where you lose them, right here. There we go. This one is working great. Okay, so let's push play. Nice and quiet. <clears throat> Rewind. Nice and quiet. Okay. Does have a bump. Bump, bump, bump. And uh, got to put that underneath there. But I'm going to see how badly it, how bad it is. It may not be uh, too bad. So we may just live with a little bit of a bump. Check. Rewind. Nice and quiet. Play. Yeah, I can feel a little bit of a bump in there. <clears throat> but let's check and see how badly it impacts the playback of the tape. We'll wait and put the screws in in just a second. Let's go ahead and load this tape. We still have to clean and... and uh, demagnetize the head but let's just make sure our amplifier is working before we get too far ahead just in case we have to uh, open things back up
Nick Greer, Port Angeles stage man. I'd like to start with uh, Reflections by Don Chambers. The drummer is Rob Sarr. Jim Hill trombone, Rick Smith. Trumpet, Jeff Wells, alto, and Don Gentry. Tenor. Just, uh, you can see these reels are out of round. Let's see how they're wobbling. And that definitely will impact the quality of the recording and the playback. So let's, okay, so we got good audio. That's so far fairly good audio. I don't know what's on this tape. So let's discover it together. I just found this tape. You see these reels are the same size and they got the same size inner spindle. So the speed won't be adversely affected. Okay, so the volume's yeah. all the way up. Okay, so somebody just playing. So not anything too important. So let's just record over that. And we'll plug in our microphone here. Let me back out the camera. There we go. All right, so I got my tape player on. And the switch doesn't work. Notice switch is not working. So we need to take care of that. But in the meantime... Let's just put a regular microphone in there. Make sure it is recording. So let me get a microphone and I'll be right back. Alrighty. Here we go. Microphone. Push record and play. And we're setting it on very slow speed. We'll take the volume up to about three quarter. And I'm about 18 inches away from the microphone talking right now, 12 to 18 inches. And uh, we're on the Electra Model TC505, solid state, five transistor. We replaced seven capacitors in the Electra. And so we're now testing the recording capability of the recorder at super slow speed here. 
and uh, three quarter volume. Let's check and rewind it and check and see how, if the re unit is even recording. Okay. The rewind is a little lazy. We might be able to adjust that just slightly. Get a little more tension on the rewind. See? If I hold the rewind down, it seems to work a little better. Okay. Recording actually is. And we're setting it on very slow speed. We'll take the volume up to about three quarter. And I'm about 18 inches away from the microphone talking right now, 12 to 18 inches. And uh, we're on the Electra Model TC505, solid state, five transistor. We replaced seven capacitors in the Electra. And so we're now testing the recording capability of the recorder at super slow speed here. And uh, three quarter volume. Let's check and rewind it and check and see how, if the re unit is even recording. Okay, good sign. And see the record, a uh, rewind, a little slow, a little slow. Um, the motor is slipping on that rubber tire, so we'll rejuvenate those rubber tires and uh, clean them really good. It's probably because they're just a little bit slippery, and I might even have gotten a drop of grease on them. But you can see it's rewinding, so it's recording nicely. Very good quality recording. There's a little background hiss. We might get rid of that with a demagnetizing and a cleaning. So let's do that next. Obviously, we don't want the tape near our demagnetizer. had this demagnetizer for years got it from Radio Shack back in the day so we're gonna just run it around the head here it's a little snug reaching in there but mainly we want to get it as close to the, the recording surface as we can and uh, I had put some material on there and uh, to keep it from scratching and I think we'll be fine I'm going to take it off in hopes that it'll give us a little more space there we go and we'll just be real careful so I'm going to hold the trigger switch down and we're just going to go gently oh yeah hear it okay we're going to go right around the face of the tape head and then these posts as well so they're not magnetized and demagnetizing the tape as they pass over that and we hold the trigger on just like we do when we're degaussing television picture tubes pull it away and let go of the trigger all right now we can wipe the, the head clean the head just a little bit with some alcohol isopropyl isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Okay. Get it up in there. There we go. Yeah, there's a little bit of crud, but not much. Seen it much worse. And we'll clean the guides, clean the erase magnet, clean this guide, and we're good. Put this back together. And let's record once again. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna speed it up all the way this time. Put the recording, put the microphone in here. Lay it, just lay it in there. I don't know, actually I'll hold it so it doesn't pick up any sound. Alrighty, we're recording once again on the Electra TC505 five transistor solid state. We've replaced, as I said, seven capacitors. We've now demagnetized the head and cleaned the uh, the head. We're noticing that the t reels on this unit are out of round, and so we're probably going to get some warble on the tape because of that. But this is just a basic test to see if it's actually recording and at what level. And hopefully we've reduced the hiss. It will depend on the tape. The age of the tape sometimes will will um, tend to play back with a lot of hiss and record and play back with hiss. But we'll see how it sounds. There's no background noise in the room. No fans running. So whatever we have is background noise is on the tape itself. So let's rewind it and see what we have. Some children were playing with this tape years ago. I, I've forgotten now. I think there was a mention of 1969 or something on one of the comments that they made. But you can see that this reel is wobbly. And that's going to create the... the uh, it's going to affect the tape path and the speed of the tape path. Uh, there's no tension whatsoever on the spool. So it's all dependent on how clean and smooth this tape this um, reel is we could try another one um, and see this is an uh, another of the same vintage and era as these so let's rewind it let's just see if we get any difference in the quality where we would really notice the difference would be in music and of course we know that the music is a problem for YouTube, so we we'll have to be careful about what we actually record. But let's um, let's just change the play reel. I'm curious. Let's just look at it. It still has some. Flip it over. Still has a little bit of warp. Yeah, it's this reel, this rim is a little worse than this one. So let's turn it over this way. And let's load the tape again. set the speed to about mid-range we'll leave the volume right where we had it before let's record all right we're going to try this again and we can see that the tape is dragging on the reel let me make an adjustment I'll pull it up just a hair let's try it now now that didn't help at all all right we were trying to adjust the tape reel to see if it'll stop touching the the reel 
while it's doing its take up, but I don't know whether it's going to help us or not. But we're going to go ahead and record this and see if our background noise, our background noise won't be affected, of course, by the real issues. But what you're hearing there is just the tape hiss. That's just tape hiss. Let me turn the volume up. That's all the way up. If I turn the volume all the way to zero. Okay, now we're back to mid-range. And now we're back to three-quarter. Um, will be interesting to see if the noise that's coming into the recording is a, a component or a, a an artifact of the amplifier and miking system or if it's the tape itself which is most likely just the tape poor quality age of the tape all right let's check this out yeah we do need a little of adjustment on the rewind it's just a little bit slow but i don't know whether it's going to help us or not but we're going to go ahead and record this and see if our background noise our background noise won't be affected of course by the real issues but what you're hearing there is just the tape hiss that's just tape hiss let me turn the volume up that's all the way up if i turn the volume all the way to zero okay now we're back to mid-range and now we're back to three quarter. Um, will be interesting to see if the noise that's coming into the recording is a, a component or a uh, an artifact of the amplifier and miking system, or if it's and it was. We could hear that there was some noise introduced by the microphone and the amp, of the tape. but definitely the noise is the tape itself. I mean, we get. Uh, playback noise not even let's just take the tape out and push play see there's a little bit of hiss right there but not a lot okay uh, adjusted the rewind and playback system or if it's the tape itself which All is right. playback is fine rewind working much better okay let me show you what I did um, this is different on every single tape so what we see here will not be consistent with every other tape deck transport system this is a very simple transport system all right, but the one impacts the other. So let me zoom in, okay? This pin right here is what record adjusts for playback and rewind. So right now, it's in a what they consider neutral. So if we push play, let me, let me push play, the motor is already engaged on the, the tire, and so nothing happens here. And it's not touching. It's just almost touching. If it touches much, it's going to stop the play. See? Because it's pushing the motor, turning the motor this direction. That's all this does. So we want it just, just barely touching or not for playback. And for rewind, we want it to push down a little harder. And that's what we wanted. That's what we had. We, What happened was there was too much of a gap there. And this arm wasn't pushing in hard enough. To push twist the motor over against the rewind tires and now it's pushing against the rewind and doing a great job so i think we're finished here we have um oh no we're not we've got to check out the remote control and see why the remote is not working but um we'll do that see if we can get it to uh remote control Let's see what's going on here. 
test this with the meter. Okay. Okay, so the switch is not working or there's a broken wire. We didn't check the mic, but kind of hard to do with this um, when it turns. Yeah, we need continuity in order for the remote to work, so we can't even check that. Okay, so let's uh, take this apart. Come on, you can do it. There we go. There we go. Okay. A little tight. All right, now we'll check the continuity from those wires to the end of the switch. I mean, to the plug. So, ground. It's open. Okay, the center pin is good, but, huh, okay, and the ground is good. But the switch is open. You know what, it, most of the time, let's get a zoom in close up. Just probably a little corrosion here on those fingers. In fact, we can see the corrosion on them. So let's just test the capability of deoxit to deal with bad corrosion. We'll work the switch a few times. Might be that one of the pins is bent. Okay, I'll turn it on, see if we got continuity now. Yep, got it now. So deoxid saves the day. So just before we go, let's try and let's push play. It's playing now. Turn it off, it stops on and off so just a little bit of corrosion that's great because it would be a shame if it was if the wire was broken in here or something like that It'd be difficult to repair so let's put her back together and let's test the microphone now and hopefully this mic is good it's a crystal microphone element so it should be really hot like the one we just checked it with the red tip we tested it with a crystal mic it's the same element that's in this is in this okay let's put our tape back on good no playing because it's turned off we go ahead and record this and see on off All right, so let's turn the volume up for record, and we'll record right on the top of what we were talking about. Okay, now we're recording with the Electra Solid State model TC Tango Charlie 505, and we're using the actual original TC505 microphone by the Electra Corporation, and hopefully the microphone is picking up this uh, voice and we repaired the 
remote control with some deoxid and didn't have to do anything there. So let's see what we have here. Rewind is not impacted by this switch. It's going to help us or not. Um, we'll go ahead and record this and see if our background noise background noise won't be affected, of course, by the... Okay, okay now we're recording with the electrosolid state model TC Tango Charlie 505. And we're using the actual original TC 505 microphone by the Electra Corporation. And hopefully the microphone is picking up this with, uh, voice and we repaired the remote control with some deoxid and didn't have to do anything there so let's see what we have here a uh, component or a uh, all right well that's great complete tape recorder runs off of two d cell batteries and it is complete and in really good shape i'll clean this up and polish the plastic just a little bit and uh, it should be ready for the big time.